Hmm. Sage. Gold powder. Yeah. Anything worth say, uh, saying. <laughs> Should start with this. Should start with this. Hi everyone. Welcome to Musings of a Melanated Kundalini Awakening. of sounds. Oh, let's give you some pretty scenery in the background, nice and green. I tried to go live on YouTube, but apparently my channel doesn't qualify for going live. So I was going to, you know, I was working another edge, you know, let me fix my hair a little bit. But I was working another edge, pushing another edge, but it didn't work out. So here I am recording. Ah, oh, it's been more than a minute. I haven't recorded since being in this new location and I've been in this new location for two months now. Right around the corner, really, you know, not, not too very far. Um, I chose to leave the farm. I chose to leave the farm and I'd gotten to a point um, where I was very definite that it was not serving my energy to be there, be in that space. And I was so clear about it that I said to Spirit, if I don't find a place in another week, I'm going to change my reservation to go back to the U.S. I've heard quite a few people call it Babylon. <laughs> and I'm not disagreeing. <laughs> it's another way of having experience. Well, when you were talking about coming to a place, a glorious, lush place like this, uh, just, yes. So, um, yes, I haven't done a video since being over here. Um, it was, um, it was not until coming that, well, so I gave spirit that, you know, I'm, I'm ready to move on or I'll change the ticket. And within four days, um, this place opened up. I'd already had a relationship with them in sharing classes here and doing sound healing here. And, um, and you know, I told them that I was going to leave early because I didn't, I was no longer wanting to, to stay. It was no longer desirous um, for me to be there. And uh, it was in my first week. I think I did not leave this place for the first 10 days. I got enough food that I needed and I didn't leave for like 10 days um, because I was so much into the decompression and the processing and the clearing of my energies and, um, and uh, largely due to a very dominant Seventh-day Adventist environment, very dominant Christian environment where things are seen very rigidly through a certain lens and you know one thing I shared with with them the couple when I moved there is because um, she started very early into asking me what do I believe which is really um, a question that's used often when you want to convert somebody you want to bring in the topic of religion so then you can then share about your religion and how good it is and all of that and I very early on said what I believe is something that I experience and it's not something that I discuss or have a conversation about. It's something that I know because it is what I experience. It's not an exercise in philosophy or whose philosophy is higher than others. I have no interest. You take care of yours, I have taken care of mine. And the other thing I shared with her was that, because it was the dominant proselytizer was the, was the wife, and the husband would sit on the side and you know, do the supporting actor scene. And, um, and the other thing is I you know, said, you won't find a context for me within your Bible. You won't be able to understand. Because I already understood that from a, very Christian um, way of seeing things, I might represent the devil. 
you know the sounds coming from me might be considered to be the devil's work and, and interpreted as the devil's work and um, and you're not going to unconvince them and I, I don't have any I'm not interested in changing anybody's mind at all I am just so in the glory of the discovery of my true self that's it I trust you to find your way I found my way and I'm finding my way so coming here and being able to you know because there are things that I wasn't comfortable and I knew I could not do like my drumming my sound um, standing out in the rain if that's what I was inspired to do standing barefoot connecting to the earth and whatever movements and breaths came through me um, could go I didn't have that freedom over there and um, and so coming here in those first 10 days it was just so glorious to decompress from all of that and I really and I, I, I realize now in hindsight that that's why I started to use um, plant medicine started to smoke um, weed again buying weed not just you know it's there and it's in the moment and it's calling but having it there and that's why I started to smoke because I was in a place where I knew on a subconscious level that my energy was not safe that my energy was not completely welcomed um, but I tried to make it work because we do that don't we that's what we've been taught try to make it work adapt and um, you know I I'm, I'm here at a point where I don't I'm not adaptable anymore not to the human conditioning not to your conditioning not even to my own attempts at conditioning myself back <laughs> this evolution has gone way too far <laughs> there's no turning back now <laughs> And so here, um, and also what my, my energy was so honored here that I was given the option of um, doing treatments. Um, treatments for me are a combination of, um, of the Thai massage that I learned in 2003, uh, the, the Reiki courses that I'd taken over the course of 2003 through 2006. Um, the sound that moves through me um, it's all very organic and um, and intuitive and I was given this option of instead of paying rent because my first month at the farm I was doing volunteer and uh, that's a word that's used very frequently here in, in, in Costa Rica for meaning free labor um, because it's not a non-profit um, it's not a it may have started off as a church thing, church mission thing, but it's expanded out for for attracting free labor. Um, and so I did um, one month of volunteering, and the work was oh, car coming by. Mm. Don't want to compete with that either. I hope you can feel and hear that breeze that's moving and I hope you can smell this white sage and burning for our conversation and I hope you can smell this gopal and burning for our conversation so I um, I can't remember where I was <laughs> Maybe it wasn't that important after all. Um, but yes, I've been given this, this, this option. My energy is so, op uh, so honored here and the work that I do honored here because I've had first-hand experience of it, that I was given this option of being able to trade um, sessions for um, in exchange for rent. And um, it is 
is the way that I see myself moving around the world because it is um, doing this work is the thing that makes me sane it's the thing that makes me sing you know um, my cells sing it's a, alive and present it's a practice in which I get to be f into my intuitive self just like I am now but it's quiet you know and it's just following sometimes it's just my hands move to places on the body and I'm going oh that's interesting that you would go there you know sometimes it's a voice that tells me oh do this now and I just follow it and it is the joy you know it feels like how I can best um, contribute to my own healing and to the healing of the person that I'm working on and also to the healing of the planet And so part of this video's purpose, not just in updating you that I'm in this new place, I, 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 I had gotten a message from Spirit. I was in Guanacaste for three months, and in that last month I'd gotten a message from Spirit, a very clear message that I was here for nine lunar months. And my purpose for being here for nine lunar months was to give birth to my work, to really share with me what is my work in the world and um, gave me the date to make my reservation to on my return flight and I flew out of Atlanta so my return flight was to Atlanta and now it's um, September whatever it is <laughs> six seven you know um, and I don't have as yet the clarity as to where I'm going. Um, you know, I don't have, I have family members there, but I wouldn't stay with them. Um, they're not um, in a place to be able to appreciate my energy. And it is not my desire to make anyone else uncomfortable, nor is it my desire to make others so comfortable that I make myself uncomfortable. Because that's what moved me from the farm, is this realization that I was doing such a job to make them comfortable that I didn't realize how uncomfortable I was becoming. Because after that one month of volunteering that was taking up too much of my body's energy, not giving me enough time, I was recuperating constantly and I wasn't having enough time to to do my practices to drum to even walk from the farm to go down to the beach to to uh, to drum was big effort and so I started to pay rent for being in a tent for having a space in the back um, that was covered and that was for two months and then just realizing this is not working this is not where I need to be staying on through to September you know um, and and then there wasn't any need to smoke weed anymore <laughs> I mean I had quit before quit buying before I left I saw the the blocks to getting it so I was like okay I guess I'm supposed to stop now you know and so I did and um, because you know that the, the gift of that plant I cannot tell you how much I appreciated the gift of that plant it was there for me when I was in the tent and doing all that processing every single day it was like a job of processing so much trauma at times feeling so overwhelming and that helped me that was definite medicine that helped me and then there comes a time where you have to or I chose to let go of the medicine and actually learn how to be into my feelings and into the sensations going through my body 
as I processed with someone or processing alone something you know so I'm so appreciative of that but it was time to let that go and I'm so grateful 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 that it was there and I was so also grateful when it was time to let go and that I let it go I saw a friend just yesterday I went by to to visit just to chat for a moment and he was so high it looked like he was intoxicated you know it was no different than being drunk and I felt sad because it felt like I was with someone who was drunk there's so much this this talk of elevating you know, smoking weed as being part of this spiritual practice. Well, one needs to also come to uh, a moment of truth when you realize that it isn't so much about your spiritual practice as it is a means of being able to medicate and escape. And there wasn't anything spiritual that I saw in his eyes where he was so completely high that he was wasted. You know? And so... Um, I am, I am so relieved that I let go when it was time to let go. So this is a call out. This is a call out video. And now I'm going to play and drum for you. And I hope that it blesses you. There's some text down below to read some of the details that you can contact me at andleewaite at gmail.com if you would like to discuss um, what I do, the magic that I bring, and um, yeah, because being in a community, being on a retreat center, being on a property with people who are trauma informed, and there's a difference between being aware of trauma and actually being trauma informed. Trauma informed, you know, means that you're actually actively working on your own trauma, working on your physical sensations working on knowing what are your triggers and how they manifest in your body and that awareness knowing how to process your trauma all of those things is is being informed and not just being aware of the subject as a general subject right and also um, being in a community uh, being in a retreat space, being on a property of people who are anti-racist. Not just people, people who um, condemn. I don't even, not even, not even interested in anybody who actually condemns racism. Because that to me is um, someone who has some latent shame or guilt around their own racism. Um, and not just know about racism as a topic or feel that it's only the KKK or the skinheads who are racist. There is not a white person that walks this planet who is not a racist, who has not been brought up in a white supremacist philosophy, yes, of the superiority, which for me is their inferiority, because only those who feel inferior have to tell themselves that they're superior to others. We've all been in the same waters, been swimming in the same water. None of us are excluded. None of us are excluded from that. But people who are actively working on the race, on, on, on excavating the racism within their own system and how it shows up in the things that they take for granted, the most smallest of judgments, yes, their own fragility working on that and then being plant-based it's it's not a judgment I had a patty I had a beef patty since I've been here so it's not like I'm you know I don't even call myself vegan because I've come to understand that vegan means that you don't even wear leather I drum on a leather drum I'm not going to change my drum so I'm not vegan but I eat plant-based because that's the thing that my body uh, lives on best. 
operates best, feels most energized by, feels the most healthiest for my immune system. So those criteria are important. And if you want healing, then I'm here to share what, what comes through me. And you are then to do with it what you will, what you're ready for. Because not all of us are ready for healing. We say we are, we get to the edges of our discomfort, our habits, our conditioning starts to pull us back in. You know, and I understand, I so understand. I am 58 years old. Do not believe that it took me overnight to get here. And so much of that, uh, of where I am now, has happened in the last three years of just falling, imploding, <laughs> imploding to discover myself. So I share with you this blessing of sound. I share with you my blessings for your life, your, my blessings for your healing, my blessings for us all to heal.
去